Okay, I need three guys to sit, come and sit here. Who will it be? One looking holy, two looking naughty. Who will that be? Thank you. I need another two. Let's take a, uh, half an hour for that. Aze, we have two. Thank you. Wherever. Okay, God is good. God is awesome. Amen. Guys, we're talking about voices. Uh, what is uh, written on that pamphlet there? Who is talking to you about your future? Something like that. About tomorrow, yes. Now, my question to you, my brother, my sister, who is talking to you about what? We are the Word of God. But you know, the Word will mean nothing to you. It's just information and it's the letter of the law that will kill unless it's taken in the context of relationship and that's what we call revelation. Revelation can only come if there's relationship. Let's say revelation only when there's relationship. And that's what the world cannot have. Satan knows the word so much better than me and you. But the information, but not the revelation. Because there's no relationship. But the challenge is, when I will have a relationship with God, and I'm gonna, going to sit at the table of my life, in the sense of, with who will I sit at this table? The question will be, if it's God, I've re- accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And God says, he will never leave me, he will never forsake me. Then he will be here at this table. Because he's faithful unto himself. When he said yes, it's yes. He will never leave me, never forsake me. But I can make a decision to ignore him or not ignore him. But if I have the word of God, I'm going to have relationship with different people, my flesh, the world, demons, but also with God. And if I gave my life to Christ and... But there's only three or four or five scriptures that really is alive in me. In this Bible, between you and God, it's all blank, 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 blank for hundreds and hundreds of pages. Except there's, there's one scripture, and there's a verse, and there's a verse. And that is the Bible that you have in your relationship with God. There's a Bible that you can read. The information, like the devil knows the information of the Bible. And then I can go into a performance, and the more I hear the voice of performance, the voice of religion, the voice of religion in, oh, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, oh, but I don't know what, I don't know this. And then I start to have a voice sitting at my table, and it's a spirit of religion, it's a demon of religion. You're not a demon. I'm just playing the, the story. And he, and he gives me a certain interpretation. And that is when you read the word, but there's not a revelation. He doesn't open up for in your relationship with God. I hear it in the context of, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to. And sometimes it's boring. And sometimes this. And so between me and this demon of religion there's a bible and there's 200 scriptures in this bible that is standing out the rest is just blank because when i hear all of this what i read i feel condemned and i feel this and i feel but that's my bible between me and that demon my bible between me and the holy spirit that he will open up for me there's you decide how many verses that's a life that's a revelation in you on this i could have a spirit i look at this and i just feel frustrated and i actually don't have time i don't have time to look at this but and i feel frustrated and later the spirit of justification and this 
demon of justification and frustration coming to sit. I know you look like an angel, but, but uh, just for the moment, you know, let you say. And I get this relationship at that where the spirit, this demon speaks to me, this spirit of frustration and justification speak to me, and I have a few other verses. So your Bible that you have in your relationship with God maybe only has five verses in, and the rest is blank. 300 verses in that Bible with where the spirit of religious religion speaks to you. This, where this spirit of frustration or the spirit of depression because you don't get it right, you just know, or are you with me? But you know, with this, if this is the demon of religion, he's going to take that word and he's going to write it on my heart, write it in my mind, and he's becoming a stronghold, hardened heart against what God wants to do in my life. But a spirit going to speak through the word. It was the devil himself speaking the word to Jesus. He was quoting scriptures to Jesus. Hello? In the temptation in the wilderness of Jesus. So that demon, there's many demons that can quote some scriptures to you. Because that was a type of temptation that Satan thought it will work with the Son of God. So most probably he will think it will work with me and you. Who is speaking to you about your future? Who is speaking to you about what? Are you here? But now God comes and he says in the New Testament, I will have a new covenant with you. And the first thing in this covenant, I will have, with the word covenant, that means I will never turn my back on you. I will never get out of this relationship. Because I'm faithful to myself. And then he said, the first thing is, I will take my word and I will write it on your heart and in your mind. So God wants to take it and put it here and put it there. The devil is only a copycat. He cannot think out something new. So that's what the demons will do. They will put words in you. That demon of rejection will take that word that the that the teacher said, you're stupid, you're never going to make it in life. And that demon, take that word and he imprints it in your heart and in your mind so that you believe you are stupid and you will never make it. Are you with me? But how are you going to fight it? Forget about the fight. The battle belongs to the Lord. You turn to Christ and you allow the Holy Spirit to write in your heart that what is from God. Because then, if you have his thoughts about you here, his thoughts, my thoughts, his heart, my heart, not just Isaiah, his thoughts are much higher than your thoughts. Ways are so much higher than your ways. But that's the challenge that we must understand how to receive the word of God so that we can have his thoughts, have his heart. Are you with me? Therefore, I must sit with the Holy Spirit. But now we see Revelation 3.20. You gave your life to Christ. What happened? In your life, there's some demons that you will have fellowship with. At your table. Today. God is there because he will never leave you, never forsake you. But there's other fellowship with other spirits also there. Because why? Me and you, we're not perfect. And we allow certain things. When you take a word, and when you take the words and it becomes a conversation. Let me explain like this. If you, if you have a conversation with somebody that's always judgmental. The more you start, the more you speak to them. The more you receive those words and hear what he has to say. The more judgmental you're going to become. And later, that person is going to be so welcome at your table, welcome in your home. So you take that word of 
rejection. You take that word of bitterness, maybe somebody hurt you, somebody disappointed you, and you have the words, I don't know necessarily going to just open my heart anymore. Because this, because that, because things could happen. And you take that word and you meditate on that word or you just think upon that type of words more and more and more. You're inviting that demon, you're inviting that spirit to come in and sit at your table. Sit at your table. There's a knock at the door. Revelation 3.20, you all know it. If you hear the knock and you open the door, then you're stupid. When you hear the knock and you hear the voice on the other side of the door. See, I'm standing at the door and knock. If somebody hears my voice, not hear my knock. Hear my voice on the other side. And it's not necessarily clear because on the other side of the door, there's the voice of God, my brother, my sister. But if I must understand that voice, if I must hear what he's saying, if he's, if on the other side of the door there's a Chinese, you don't know the Chinese language, you say, somebody chewing on a chappy or something. That's all that you hear. You just ignore it. But now when you read the word, and that word many times means, it feels it means nothing to you. It's nothing standing out. It's just, I'm reading the word. I'm reading the word because God said read the word. Because God said meditate on the word. Because God said there's no revelation coming out. There's nothing standing out. There's so many things I don't even understand. But you read the word. You come to know the language. How many people when you studied Afrikaans, English, Sudu, Zulu, you had this major revelation. Ooh, that means so much in your life. You just had to learn the language. But it's in the context of revelation with somebody in a relationship that it had meaning. It had meaning, the language, in when you are in the relationship. When I started long before 1994, uh, jump in a taxi and go and preach uh, and evangelize in Shoshan Gue. You know, it's, it's okay. You don't need to learn all the language. But when you greet, it's just like... Well, okay, yeah, who we are. <laughs> Hello? But so, if you come to know the word, then you will recognize the language on the other side of the door. And that is Jesus knocking that wants to come in and sit at your table. Not at the table in the office to instruct you what is everything that is wrong, what is right, what is wrong, what is right in your life. He says... If you open, hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will commune with you. We will have fellowship. We will share hearts. We will talk to one another. We will relate. We will have relationship with one another. God wants to come and relate with you. And in the context of sharing hearts, relationship, you know when a family can sit at the table and not necessarily have a fight, it also happens, maybe only with us, I don't know. But, but they could have such wonderful times also around the table. Are you with me? That's God's desire for you and me, my brother, my sister. But it all depends with whom are you speaking about your future, about your relationships, about your finance. Let's say you are about provision and how... Things going to look in the future and uh, how the finances look and how the job and how the this and the economy and everything. And then about your finances, you get in the place and who is sitting at the table when you are talking, thinking, planning, strategizing about finances. God will be there because God is faithful. He will never leave you, never forsake you. But he will sit as the good shepherd that will lead you into green pastures with mercy, with grace, following you, hello, with a cup that will run over. But if you're not facing him, if you're not interacting with the word with him, he will just be there. But if you sit here at the table and the theme, 
the book is opened about provision and finance. Then there's certain others also. There's a spirit of stress, and we have our book we, where we stress about the finances because of this 10 points that is like this, 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 and this is alive in my heart, it's a reality in my mind, and me and this demon of stress have this relationship when we have a topic of finance then at my table that spirit is there the spirit of fear maybe a spirit of greed spirit of deception when i have that one day then this will happen then i will be somebody the spirit of deception and the spirit of god he will always be there with every theme in your life, he will be there. But he will not force his voice on you. Voices, voices, who is speaking to you? <sighs> Who's speaking to you? About relationship, you can, just, can come and sit at your table. And with a relationship, you struggled, yes, with pornography. You struggled with this. You struggled with uh, what? Whatever. In a, in a sexual way or in an unhealthy way or performance in relationships and all that other chachis sitting there but God is also sitting there and about relationship there's three verses of the word in the whole Bible the rest is all blank with that spirit there's this verse where I can justify but you know David did this and he was still a man after God's own heart even though he he saw the girl he saw the auntie and killed the husband and this, this and uh, you know I'm not so bad you know he was still a man of the god's own heart and with the spirit of justification that demon i and that demon is at the table when i'm talking about relationships so with every facet of your life you have some friends at your table you have some friends at your table but what are the friends doing there Hello, what are they doing there? So my brother, my sister, how are you going to deal with them? You need to chase them out. Yes, but how are you going to chase them out? Because it's not like tomorrow, suddenly, clickety-click, I chased out all the voices of, of stress and anxiety, and it's gone. Boom. <laughs> now, at the table, you will have to start to focus only on God. And let him write on your heart, write in your mind the word. Focus on him and ignore that voice of anxiety, that voice of negativity, that voice of deception, that voice of temptation. I start to ignore that because I focus on him. That's Hebrews, you write it down, 12, verse 1 and 2. While we have all this cloud of witnesses, let us... Lay down all the load, the sin that so easily entangles. Let's get rid of all this chamors. By what? So that we can run the race with endurance. I set on Jesus Christ, the author, perfecter of our faith. So when you focus on the overcomer, when you focus on the one that overcame, when you focus on the one where the battle belongs to the Lord, and he has won the battle already, you have already your victory, the victorious one. When you focus on the victorious one that brought the victory for you, then you have, you have it. Focus on who you are in Christ. Focus who Christ is in you and who you are in Christ. And the rest, God will deal with it. You focus on the love of God and the love will drive out the fear. You will not drive out the fear. But the perfect love one, John 4, 18. Amen? The perfect love will drive out the fear. Who's the perfect love? Jesus Christ himself. Jesus, God will drive out the fear in your life. If you focus not on the fear to fight the fear, but focus on the God that is called love. You focus on the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace will deal with anxiety and distress. You focus on the El Shaddai, the one that is more than enough, the Jehovah Jireh, the, the God that provides. You focus on the good shepherd that will lead you. You focus on him, and he will deal with the lion and the bear. He will deal with that. Oh, come on, man. But who are you speaking to? Because the one that you speak to, that's the one that you relate to. The more and more and more. The devil can speak to you. 
but Jesus chose to have no relationship with him. But start at the table to ignore certain, what I call it, certain haha spirits. Are you still with me? Are they looking good there? Oh, man. Okay. We're going to have, we're going to have a communion. But when we have it, I want us to, um, not immediately, not immediately, but I want us to focus on God in the sense our victory is through the blood. It's Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame through the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and that they didn't love their life even unto death. Amen. So end time. More and more that we go into end time, God's going to shake the nations. God's going to shake the nations because he wants to brag with his church that the only thing that will stand, the only house that will stand is the house that's built on the revelation of who God is. The foundation on the revelation of who he is. Revelation in the context of relationship. Not in the fact because you have the information about the word, not because you know a lot of the word. It's not going to help you. God, we, we prophesied in your name. God, we did this. God, we did this. Jesus said, I don't know you. And he will not open the door for you. And I'm not talking about you now you're going to burn in hell. I'm talking about tomorrow when God is, is coming into the situation and there's people going with him into that. You will miss the opportunity. And that by the time you're knocking at the door in your situation that God, you want to go with God into your job, God into your uh, challenges in your struggles with God into your financial situation the door is closed for the opportunity yesterday because you never knew him you never sat with him you never meditated on his word you never s honored the relationship in that area of your life so many knocking so many doors to be closed not because God wants to be nasty with all respect but because you decided not to honor him and invite him into that area tomorrow of that meeting that you're going to have tomorrow. That opportunity or that challenge or that intimidation that you need to face tomorrow. Because I can be so blasé. The sin of the prostitute, the tax collector, they could see who he was. But the one that was so used to church, used to this, used to hearing that verse, used to hearing that, those were the guys they could not see the Son of God. They could only see the Son of Joseph. Could, and Jesus could not do miracles in that place. Not that he doesn't have the capacity. But he will not force the miracle. And God cannot do that in your life. And he needs to leave the Nazareth hearts and pass you by to go to the city where people will recognize him and honor him. In the midst of sometimes people that has made a lot more of sin in their hearts. But they chose to relate and to believe the word. May God help you to get the blasphemous out of our lives. Amen. No word of, I've heard that before, I've heard that before. So if you've heard it before, you have immediately a testimony about what happened. So if I tell you something today that you know already, then immediately in your heart you have a testimony about how 30, 60, 100 fold, there were multiplication if you took the word two years ago. Amen. But we are constantly reminded. When you meditate on the word, it means you go back to it again and again and again and you hear again what you've heard before and you hear again what you've heard before and you hear again what you've heard before you hear again what you've heard before until it explodes where you didn't expect it to explode in such a way until it changed certain ways that you were thinking but you never thought that that thinking was supposed to change but you had the guts to be faithful by just meditating on the word and get back to the word. And don't let the spirit, the demon of frustration, sitting at your table tell you, that was now enough. It is, in any case, no difference. Are you still here? 
So how am I going to start to ignore them? One of the keys, the, 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 the keys, prayer. So in prayer, you know, I've heard many times people, and then I realize I'm myself sometimes doing it, but you, you get a psychological prayer, and that's okay, but it's just psychology, it's not prayer. Where you share your heart with God. God, I feel so and I feel so. But you just need somebody to share it with. That's psychology. That's not prayer. And it's okay. God, and I feel like this. And God, I feel like that. And God, I feel like that. That's good. Because it's good to put it on, on the table. Not in the throne room. At the cross. Because the Juaras, you don't give it to the Lord. You give it, you lay it down at the cross. Are you with me? You don't go in the throne room and throw a lot of rubbish there. Who will go if you respect some other king out there and you go with three black bags of the most stinking rotten and you go and throw it. Oh, thank you for, for taking all my burdens and you throw it open there in front of the, the throne and you walk out. They're going to put you in a mental institute. But why we say I'm, gonna, I'm giving uh, everything to the Lord and I, I'm taking it to the cross. Where God dealt with all the rubbish. So that when I enter the throne room, I enter through the blood of Christ, clean, spotless. I'm covered by the excellence of the offering that Jesus made. And that is called the blood. That's how you enter the throne room. Are you with me? So with all this other huaras, that you start to ignore, you focus on him. And that is with prayer. Where I'm not telling him all the things that are wrong and all the things that are this and all the things and why you're stressing. Why you want to tell him why you stress? Okay, that's psychology. Sit in principle and share it with somebody. Or you can say to God, but don't call it prayer. Because in prayer is your positioning before God. And that is where I come with thanksgiving. I give him honor. I focus on him. I put my desires before him with thanksgiving. Hello? That's prayer and worship. Prayer and worship. So with prayer and worship, we focus on him. And he will deal with that. He will deal with that. You worship him for he as the perfect, perfect love. Who brought forth the concept of love. The idea of love. The reality of love originates from him. And when you are wowed by what is love all about. That love will deal with the fear. And the insecurity. And the fear of rejection. And the fear that you will be rejected. And you try to be in with the friends or do this or that. And there's a one side of you here. And with that friends there's a side of you there. And with that friends there's a side of you there. Because you try to be in. Because you need to be accepted. Because of um, for business sake or for whatever rubbish sake. That spirit of justification will tell you. That sitting at the table in your house. So prayer and worship, my brother, my sister. And when are we talking about the war? And we look at Ephesians 6. When you have a war against the enemy, all that you do is you put on the armor of God. So that when you face the enemy, he see Christ. Hello. Oh, somebody say amen before you totally fall asleep. Not you guys, but near Diego. Is you here? You are here? So when you talk about battle, and you honor him that the battle belongs to the Lord, and he's victorious, and you are more than a conqueror because he was the conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror because I take the benefit of what the conqueror brought to me. Amen? And you put on the armor of God, helmet of salvation, so that you think what he thinks. Breastplate of righteousness, so that your heart is protected into what he feels. The word sword of the Spirit, so that he's his, his, his sword. Not my sword, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Where He wants to go, shoes for the readiness of the gospel. Belt of truth. I'm bound by truth. I'm not bound by bitterness. I'm not bound by the circumstance. I'm not bound by the facts of, of challenges. I'm bound by truth that sets me free. I'm bound by that what sets me free. It's opposites, but 
So, with the armor of God, the enemy must flee because everything is about the Word of God and the Word of God is against him. The Word of God, Jesus said, is also written. He didn't just say, because I'm Jesus, there you go, devil. No. He said, it's also written. It's also written. It's also written. Why? Because Jesus had the Word in relationship with the Father. So you know the Word in a relationship with the Father. Whatever the enemy comes to, you just bring forth what is in this relationship and the enemy need to flee. The enemy need to flee. The enemy need to flee. Who's speaking to you? It's not starting with, I'm saying, I want a relationship with a demon of rejection. Who the freak will say that? Nobody. But when you meditate on the thoughts of rejection, you invite that voice on the other side of the door. And he's knocking. That rejection is knocking on your door. Because that person belittles you. That person hurt you. And as soon, as soon as that person belittled you and hurt you and disappointed you, uh, rejection is knocking at the door. God said to Cain, sin is behind the door. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. God wants to warn you. Who's on the other side of the door? Don't pray that God will open a door. Don't only pray that you will hear the voice on the other side of the door. Because Satan and all the demons from hell can open up a million doors for you. You pray for that you will have this opportunity there. And the door opens. But it's Satan. It's the right opportunity, but it's the wrong time. Go in and mess up your destiny. Go up into the right place that God has for you. Caleb, Joshua... Mom and dad, they were so stupid to moan and groan about everything in the desert. God said they must go and die in the desert. They're going to take 40 years old to all of them to die. And we must just walk with and we stood on the promises of God. God gave us the promise that we will inherit the land. Me, Joshua, Caleb, and, our, and this new generation. We will take the, the land. Stand on the promises of God and go into Canaan. And Satan opened the door to go over the Jordan with the promises of God and to take Canaan. Who opened the door? Hell and the devils. If you just think you go on an open door. But if the priest with the presence of God is not moving first, you don't cross that Jordan. If the presence does not go first, you don't go. Because you only follow you don't go with a promise. You go with a presence. Oh, you could write that down. and I know you know that long ago. I just realized it's so intense now. But please, my brother and my sister, because you are sitting with certain things. Now, we don't have time for that. So when we're going to have communion, you can uh, make right there for with the communion leaders. Thank you. What are we saying? I want to, you to, to read this to you. Uh, give him a hand. Thank you very much. It was excellent acting. They were very good, eh? Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. People that have some savvy. Verse 16 in 1 Corinthians 10. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we are giving thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? Fellowship. Fellowship through communion. And is not the bread that we break a participation? Everybody say participation. You are actively involved. First, maybe just wait. Wacht um, leer, a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we share one bread. Consider the people of Israel. I'm cutting apart, verse 20. I do not want you to be participants with demons. We just talked about demons. We have fellowship through communion fellowship with God through the blood through the body of Christ we have fellowship with God and in the same context he says I don't want you to have fellowship with demons 
other translations, to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too when you're sitting at the table. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Make your decision today when you have communion. But through communion, my brother and my sister, praise God for the blood that wipe out that I say. I will ignore this. I will ignore this because in the new covenant, I write my laws in your heart, write my laws in your mind, and I will never think of your sin, your iniquity ever again. Now you put your thoughts with his thoughts. And through the blood of Christ today with communion, you say, I choose to believe God that he will never remember or think again, even of the shame of the past in my life. He's washing me clean because I'm going to overcome, first point, through the blood of the Lamb. And between me and all these other, other demons that I can have fellowship with anytime, I put the blood of Christ I put it there. I don't want to see your face. I don't want to hear your voice. Nothing. I, I, I'm putting the blood of Christ here. Because the blood of Christ reminds you that you're a failure. Every demon. You're a failure. And you're going to fail in my life because of the blood. Because of the blood, you're going to fail in my life. And when you boast in the cross, and only in the cross, you will have the victory. Because the cross declare all demons failure let's say the demons will fail in my life as I boast in the cross and respect the blood so I want you in this week please please in this week go and sit with Holy Spirit and take 10 themes of your life let's say relationships I had to in the first service and now also finish with the introduction of the sermon. <laughs> so I leave you with the rest. You take the point of finances and you go and ask Holy Spirit, who is sitting at my table when I think, when I plan, when I dream, when I strategize about provision? Who's sitting at my table? Fear, anxiety, performance, greed, what? Jealousy about what those guys had. What is the stuff sitting there that I must be aware that I need to ignore those voices? Re the theme of relationships in your life. Who's sitting at that table? I'm not good enough. Spirit of rejection. Fear of rejection. Not open your heart for relationships again because you got hurt in church. Take the, theme, the ten themes. One of the major themes. Who are you? Who are you? In Christ. Because you can have fellowship. Who's speaking to you? Who's speaking to you? When somebody hurt you. When you are trying to sort out. And I'm going to sort out this relationship. Because I have an issue with that brother. Because he hurt me. And he thinks he's right. And I'm wrong. But I'm right and he's wrong. And now we speak to one another. And then he acknowledges. Sorry. I'm wrong and you are right. And you feel now it's sorted out. That is me and you at the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the snake giving you some comfort. That you are right and he was wrong. A uh, thing is not sorted out when somebody acknowledges he's wrong and that you are right. That is the devil saying to you, oh, you know your potential. Let him speak to you about your future. You know your potential. You can even be like God that you will understand right from wrong. That's what the devil said to Eve. He didn't say, oh, look at the very nice fruit. <laughs> no. He talked. She the snake talked to Eve and Adam about their potential, about their capacity. The world can tell you a lot about your potential. A lot. So that you can miss your destiny with God. And nice. You, you know, you can understand the difference between right and wrong. This is what could happen to you if you eat from this tree. Come on, man. This tree, there's not, it's not so bad. And then she saw. Then, 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 after the discussion, she saw. After the input. After Satan talked to her about her identity and who she can become. Then only she saw 
the fruit was good. When she had a new perspective of things in life, then she saw the fruit of sin is good. Then it's okay. Then the temptation out there for you and me in our flesh with things is sometimes so intense because the fruit is so good because now we fight the fruit. Rubbish. Get back to the input that you received about who you are and what you can be that you received from hell through the snake. Go and find yourself in Christ. Because in this place, we're going to give you a, a small cross also. It's not a magic thing, please. But a reminder. The sign of the new covenant, the cross. The old covenant, the sign, circumcision. New covenant sign, the cross. You decide to boast in the cross. And the message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Uh, they're going to help some leaders also about giving that out. Are you with me? Uh, please, just tell me something. I know you're hungry and it's hard and all the facts of circumstance. Hello? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak to us. I pray that we will be open for what you want to do right now. Help us to identify that what is not from you at the table of our lives. You invite us. You invite us to your table. You invite us to the banqueting table and your banner over us is love. But then you want us to invite you to our table, in our houses. What an awesome privilege, Lord. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to come to know the language so that we can recognize your voice on the other side of the door. That we will open no door or we will invite nobody in because the door is open. But that we will recognize you and you alone. In Jesus' name. So we pray. If you're a believer and your life is right with Christ, we invite you to partake with us in communion. Maybe it's be a time of breakthrough for you. That in so many areas of your life, you turn your back on fellowship with demons. Like it said there, in the context of communion. Where it said, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. It's either the one or the other, my brother. You cannot have part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Decide today. Your life will be at the table of the Lord. Not at the table of demons. Amen. Amen. For I received from the Lord. And I also pass unto you that the Lord Jesus, in the night he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this as you affectionately remember me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, The cup of the new covenant is in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We proclaim his victory. Then whoever eats this bread, drinks this cup in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. May God help us to have respect for what he has done for us on the cross. May it be with awesome gratitude in your heart that even this morning you partake of the body and the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. Amen.